Thank you for joining us today. My name is Janie Sacco, and I am the Outreach and Marketing Specialist with the Small Business Administration Seattle District Office. We are going to go over a presentation today on getting your unique entity ID. This presentation was originally done with One East Side on August 4th and compiled by One East Side. We are going to walk you through SAM.gov and the process to get your unique entity ID. You will sign into www.sam.gov and you will start with this process. One thing I do want to cover is what is a unique entity ID? Well, as of April 4th, 2022, all entities receiving federal funds via grants or contracts must have a unique entity ID. Working Washington 5 is a state grant program. However, the funds really originated from the federal government. So Working Washington 5 is requiring the UEI as part of the application process. The good news is that you can apply while you are waiting for your UEI and funding will occur once you have your UEI if you do not have it at the time of application. The UEI is a unique 12 character alpha and numeric ID assigned by the federal government via the System for Award Management, otherwise known as SAM.gov. If you are already registered in SAM.gov, the good news is that you already have a unique entity ID as well. This includes businesses who have inactive registrations. Your UEI is located on your SAM.gov entity record, and we are going to take a look at that right now. What you need to do is log in to www.sam.gov. And in the entity area, click on the active registration button and then click next and you will see your unique entity ID right below your business name in this section of the page. So you now have your UEI and can complete that as part of your WW5 application. Now we're going to talk about those businesses who do not already have a unique entity ID from SAM.gov. What you do is log in to the website and review the information. You'll see again that April 4th, 2020, the unique entity identifier was required in lieu of a DUNS number. So then you go to the bottom of the page and click OK. This transitions you to getting started. And what you need to do is go to your right and click on the Get Started button twice. This now takes you to the next page, which has you accept all of the terms and conditions of using SAM.gov. You click on the green Accept button at the bottom of the page. As with all systems, you need to have a user ID and password. In this case, your user ID is your email address. You then select the default language preference you have. It is either going to be English, Spanish, or French. You then click on the I read and accept the login.gov rules of use, and you click on the blue and white submit button. This will take you to the next page where you are confirming your email. You will need to check your email to make sure that you received one from, from this system. If you did not receive an email, you can click the resend button or you can click use a different email address. But hopefully you have received your email and then you can click on confirm email address and it will take you to the next page. You now have to create your, your password. It is a 12 
character number or alpha. And you put in letters, numbers, symbols. Have good strength because you don't want it used by anybody else. Once you have your 12 character password, you click continue and you will go to the next page. You then have to set up an authentication process for this system. To the left, the easiest way to authenticate your information is via text or voice message, and you click on that button. You then are required to put in your phone number and then select whether or not you want to get a text message or a phone call, and then you click send code. You will then get an acknowledgement that you've created an account with login.gov and your email address will be listed. You click on agree and continue and it will take you to the next page. The next page indicates that you have signed in again with your email address and you can conti click continue or switch emails. Once you click continue, you will see that you are back to the get started in sam.gov page. And you can tell that you're in because you can see you have an option to sign out of the system. Again, you click on get started and it will take you to getting your unique entity ID. So this part is very important. What you want to do is make sure that you select the proper button for the application. If you are solely getting a unique entity ID for WW5, please click on get a unique entity ID only. And then you will click on the next button at the bottom of the page. You then have to enter your entity information here. And this is really important. You want to make sure your legal business name matches what is on the Secretary of State website in the first box. You may, as an option, put in your trade name or doing business as name, which you can get from the Department of Revenue website. And I would encourage you to do that because it helps define or limit the number of matches from the public records this system will pull from. You then also down below, put in your physical address of the business. You then hit the next button at the bottom of the page. This will take you to the next, next page, which in the box above will automatically populate the name and address information you entered from the prior page. This is what you are trying to validate to. You have three options for validation, and they are my entity is listed and all details are correct, meaning your legal business name and your physical address are correct, or there is a close match. The second button is my entity is not listed, meaning that none of the information is there. And then the third option is that my entity is listed, but some details are incorrect. In the drop down box below, you have the option of indicating that my legal business name is incorrect, my physical address is incorrect, or my legal business name and physical address are incorrect. So you then look at Column number two, you are trying to match up and select the information that most closely matches the information here as it relates to the option that you select. Okay, and then you hit the next button. If your entity is listed and all details are correct, you're going to mark, excuse me, you're going to mark that button and then you're going to mark the entity that matches. And then you will hit the next button below. 
you now are required to validate your information and you're looking at the selected entity. And if you are incorporated in the state of Washington, you will go to the drop down box and select Washington, and then you will hit the next button below. You now have to go through a little bit of a validation process where you're indicating whether you want to exclude or include the information about your business in a public search. And then you are going to certify that you're authorized to conduct transactions on behalf of the entity. And then you're going to request your unique entity identifier. And there you have it, your 12 character unique entity identifier assigned to your business name at your address in the state of Washington. And you wanna take an image of that, but you should also receive an email at the ad email address you indicated in this system to validate the information. Now, if your entity is not listed, you're going to select that button and then you are going to click on verify entity details. If your entity is listed, but some of the information is incorrect, then you're going to, again, select which information is incorrect, and you're going to make a selection for the closest match. And then you're going to click on the box, verify entity details. The most important thing here is that when you're looking at the documentation to provide to support your entity name and or your physical address or both, you do need to make sure that the documentation you're providing has the legal business name and physical address in the same document. And that document must be less than five years old. The legal business name and date of incorporation must be in the same document. And what you can do is go to the Secretary of State website at www.sos.wa.gov and look at all of your documentation you have filed for the entity. Make sure it is in a PDF form, save it to your computer, and then you can attach those documents to the box in number two. You will either drag them and put the file here or you will choose them from your folder. Once you have selected documents, that meet the criteria here, they will appear down below in this box. And then in number three, you need to type in the specific details about the information and what it is correcting as it relates to your entity selection. And then you click submit. So now I want to share some of the documents that are acceptable to validate your information. They include certified copies of share certificates, your articles of organization, if you're an LLC, or your articles of incorporation, if you are a corporation status, whether it is a C Corp or an S Corp, you may provide tax return filings, a certificate of formation, your articles of formation, or your certificate of organization. And what I want to point out here for the items that are asterisked is that you do not need to provide confidential information like your revenue or expenses if you're providing your tax returns. Those items can be redacted. What you are trying to validate with any and all of these documents is the physical address of the business and the name of the entity, and they need to appear on the same document. So other documents to support this may be utility bills or bank statements, any type of trade name or doing business as documentation, stock ownership, your employer identification, number documentation from the IRS, or any other tax identification confirmation documents from the IRS. Your company bylaws may have your legal entity name and address in them, and the operating agreements for a limited liability company may have them as well. If your business is a sole proprietorship or an individual doing business only, 
um, then you may use a non-expired driver's license. Here are some sample documents that have information redacted. And again, that's perfectly fine. But remember, what you're trying to do is provide documents that are not more than five years old or a combination of documents that support your name and physical address of the business in combination that are not more than five years old. So again, please remember, clearly state what is not correct or state what does not match when you are preparing the information in your boxes. Include the correct name, address, and any other data for which you're providing and the name of the document that you're providing to support your application process. Sometimes the more information you provide, the better to help you get through this process. But be efficient. And you can limit the number of documents to what really is needed to evidence your business name and your address. Some other tips for validation include being sure that you, again, provide your information the first time through. Create only one ticket per entity. If you create more than one ticket, it will actually slow the process down. And this process can take a while, so a little bit of patience may be warranted here. If you go beyond a 10-day period of time, you may also do a chat or have email correspondence with the help desk at fsd.gov about your entity validation. But please try to give them at least 10 business days to get through the process. Because again, the validation agents are working on a significant number of these requests that are coming in, and it can take a little bit of time to process them. I do wanna share my personal experience with my husband's and my business. I went through and did this as a test for our company. And I did end up selecting the option where there was not a match for the business name exactly on the, the column number two. And I went through and provided our organization documents that were a combination of more than five years old our original organization documents, and then our annual report, all from the Secretary of State website at www.sos.wa.gov. And that process from start to finish took five business days before I was issued a UEI. So it can be efficient and it can be successful. You just need to stay the course and make sure you're providing clean documentation. This is the presentation for today. Thank you very much.